Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and I am back today with challenge number four in my Shop Your Stash September challenge series. I hope you'll stick around, find out what the new challenge is, see what I'm going to make, and find out how you can play along. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. So if you haven't already heard, I am doing a little challenge this month on my channel. It is called Shop Your Stash September, and I am challenging myself, as well as you, to use what you have. So I have been posting challenge videos this month, and you can see all of the previous ones linked in the playlist in that description box below. I am trying not to spend any money on new craft supplies in September, and so far it has been working out really, really well. If you're also trying to shop your stash and not spend this month, let me know how it's going for you in that description box below. The only crafty thing I bought this month was actually a gift certificate to Simon Says Stamps for a crafty friend for her birthday. So hey, it wasn't even for me. I consider this a win because by now I would have definitely broken down. Now if you are going to join in on the challenges, you don't have to not spend this month to play along. You just can't use anything on your challenge project that is new. So we want to go in those boxes and bins and tubs and get out stuff maybe we haven't even used yet. The newest challenge, challenge number four, is Oh So Inspired. Now that title might sound familiar to you. My sister Lisa and I stop by about every other Saturday and we have a fun live crafting session called Oh So Inspired. What we do is take an inspiration piece that has been submitted by a channel member and we create something new that is based upon it in some way. I'm a big believer that all of us find inspiration in others and we can be inspirational to others. So I like to see what others create and find out ways to make it my own with stuff in my stash. So for this challenge, I do have three options for you that you can take inspiration from. Or the fourth option is you can choose something to take inspiration from. Let's go ahead and see those pieces now. Option A is this thank you card with the paint swishes in the background. Option B is kind of this fun fold card with the floral pattern paper on the front. And option C is this shaker card with like a cutout frame from the background. Option D, of course, is to go online and find something that inspires you to get creative. Now you can totally try to recreate it with what you have, or you can take a small piece of it and create a new project. Today, I will be taking inspiration from A, the thank you card, and what I see are the paint swashes in the background, and then that big, bold sentiment. Now, I will be making a card, but you don't necessarily have to make a card for your project. You know, you could use that shaker card and make a shaker tag. You can do whatever you want and whatever fits those items in your stash. In front of me here are the main stamps that I'll be using today. For my sentiment, I will be using You Got This from Elizabeth Craft Designs Hello stamp set. And then for my paint swashes or swooshes or strokes or whatever, I'm using this one from Gina Marie Designs. Now as I add other products and tools in the process video, I will be sure to let you know, and also later on in the video I'm going to give some more specifics about how you can play along. If I do leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! 
off camera, I worked on the placement of the first stamp. I centered it as best as I could from top to bottom and made sure the area that was stamped into the cardstock later would be wide enough for my sentiment. Then when I placed it into the Misty, I made sure to put the top of the piece of cardstock lined up with one of the measurements on the edge. In this case, it was at the one and a half inch mark. I also chose a rainbow of Gina K Designs inks, and I did it in a little bit of an alternative. It was more of a fall looking rainbow to me. I will list each of the colors I chose in that description box below. The first color that I stamped for my rainbow was the yellow because that is the middle color. I did ink this up and stamp it a couple times just because sometimes yellow turns out a little bit light, but I did want it to be visible on the final card. Once I had stamped it twice, I brought in a little piece of paper towel and wiped off the mouse pad on my Misty before cleaning off the stamp. This is just so I don't get my fingers in that excess ink and transfer it onto my project later. Now when that was done, I played a little bit with the positioning how much I should move it for each of the stamps. At first I tried one inch, but it was too far up. I tried 7 eighths, again just a little bit too far up, so I decided to move it 3 quarters of an inch each time. Once I had that measurement figured out, I continued to stamp my rainbow. The next color was the green because it would be down below the yellow, so I inked that up and stamped it. Now some of these colors I did once, some of them I did twice, it just kind of depended what it looked like on the piece of cardstock. After I was done with the Knight of Navy swoosh, I then reset my piece of cardstock with the top at one and a half inches. Then I moved it down three quarters of an inch each time between the orange and the red. Now here in just a little bit, you're gonna notice the red turned out a little bit splotchy. But one of the cool things about Gina K Designs inks is it eventually levels itself out. You'll see that once it has had time to dry later, it is nice and smooth. Now that my rainbow is all stamped, let's go ahead and find out a little bit more about the challenge. I would love you to join me this month in these challenges and create with what you have. And you can do this in three simple steps, which I will explain now. The first thing that you'll do is create a new project following today's challenge using only items from your stash. Then you're going to upload a photo of that project using the form linked in the description box below. And finally, you can sit back and enjoy the recap video in October. I do ask that you create a separate project for each challenge. And please, even if you're super inspired by a single challenge and create more than one project, please just choose your favorite to upload. When you photograph your project, rectangle landscape photos are the best and make sure to send them at a nice quality. And just a heads up that even though my watermark will not be on your photo, I will not have time to add your name or YouTube username. So if you would like to do that, please do that ahead of time. And here in just a second, I'll show you a quick way that you can do that. Once your project photo is ready for uploading, you will need to use the specific form for the challenge. Each challenge will have a new form linked, so make sure when you're uploading that the challenge number or name at the top of the form matches the challenge that you're submitting for. If you do want to add your name to your photo, it doesn't have to be anything fancy or require any special software. Most mobile devices and laptops or computers will allow you to open a photo and add a text box to it. Then you would just save this and upload it to the form. Speaking of the form, an example is up on screen now and you will want to make sure that you fill out each individual section. You will enter your YouTube username, your first name, 
your email address and the email address is only if I would need to contact you with a question and I will not be retaining these after this month's challenge. You will then let me know how you followed the challenge. In this example, it would be what kit you used. Then I need you to agree to let me use the photo in the October video. And finally, you're going to upload the photo from your computer and submit it. You will want to make sure that you see this screen that says you have submitted it before closing out your window. All photos will be due by midnight central time on October 10th. I am looking forward to seeing what you create this month and hope that you'll join me. Now it's time to get that sentiment stamped. Once again, I'll be using a black ink with my chosen sentiment. Now when I set this up in the Misty, it will be off to the left side of the card, kind of centered in the previously stamped area. Now because this is a new stamp and I haven't used it yet, and I want a nice solid black, I did end up inking it up and stamping it probably three to four times, and I did eventually get a great solid black. Now while you watch me do that, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. Today I have another great question from channel member Karen C and she would like to know what is your favorite local and online craft stores to shop at? You can let us know in the comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV so we know you've answered it and would like us to see it. When I go out and actually shop, which doesn't happen a lot lately, especially with my no spend month, I usually hit up Michael's, so a big box craft store. It's just super close to my house. Now, if I want something a little bit more unique or you know, brands that are well known that Michael's doesn't carry, I go to my local scrapbook or stamp store and it's called Busy Scrappin'. And it is in the Omaha metro area. If you've never been there, I highly suggest it. If I go online to shop, it is usually to Amazon because the things I usually need are just generic crafty products. Now a couple sites that I always check out their new releases would be Gina K Designs and lately I'm really getting into tailored expressions. So if I shop from a specific company, it's usually there. Now the good thing is, since I'm on the Not Too Shabby Design team, I kind of get a fix each month of some new goodies, along with, of course, my paper pumpkin kits, which I get. Off camera, I cut and folded a black card base, just like on the original inspiration piece, and I also cut a scrap of white cardstock to go on the inside for my personal message. Once those two were adhered together, I added my stamp piece to the front, and now it's time to add a little sparkle. I ended up choosing some glittery sequins. I thought that these were a little bit better than like straight metallic. It had a more rough feel to it, which I thought was good for kind of a fall rainbow. I placed five glue dots kind of zigzagged back and forth from the top left corner to the bottom right. And then I went in and placed one of the sequins on each of those glue dots. And here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's card for challenge number four in the Shop Your Stash Challenge series. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. I hope that you'll join me on this challenge or one of the others. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.